Hey, want to play some games? <clears throat> that was awful, and I should never do that again. Let's think about games people play with each other. Except I actually mean this in a fun way. I'm going to review a few games that I've played in my life that helped me actually kind of learn some life lessons. More importantly, I've really learned with the people that I've played with some valuable lessons as well. Uh, I've even commented on that before. Uh, thank you, Walter. But more than that, uh, these are games that are things that you can learn specific sort of items from. First one is Pandemic. Pandemic is a cooperative board game about saving the world from the ravages of a horrible disease. This is all about how to lose gracefully. Sometimes you don't win in Pandemic. And when you don't, it's literally nobody's fault. Everybody is working together to try and create an optimal situation when, in which you can find a cure. Uh, you have to accept that sometimes there literally isn't anything else you could have done and then move on. Works in life. Shadows over Camelot. This one is interesting because it's how not to trust people. Shadows is a game about uh, being in a group where one person is a traitor. So you play as well as you can all the time, trying to achieve your ends. But the thing you have to remember is that somebody else is working on a different agenda. They're literally not playing the same game you are. They've done me dirty. Works in life. World of Warcraft. If you don't know what a massive multiplayer online game is, uh, really short is that you play a character who is in a game, in a persistent game world, and the character you build stays in that game working with the same people who are present. Um, WoW, World of Warcraft, WoW, and every MMO since always follow the same general plan. Uh, you level up, you get better gear in order to fight bigger monsters so you can level up and get better gear. Little bit of a treadmill. Thing is, comes a point where you have to plan out what you want to be like and then figure out the steps you have to take to get there. And those steps, that journey can potentially take weeks, months, even years in some cases. And it ends with you making adjustments to your character that are frequently very small in nature. It's all about the little steps you made on your journey getting there. <laughs> Inevitably, I have to bring up Dungeons and Dragons. I have spent a lot of time with role-playing games. I'm talking about tabletop RPGs. Don't confuse them with the MMO I mentioned. <laughs> what they do is incredible because if you have kids, this is great, take note. Um, it's one of the strongest bonding opportunities you can have to tell an interrelated story together with people at a table. But more than that, you get a chance to work on your empathy by literally putting yourself in another person's shoes. How would this character react? What would they do? Um, mechanically, then you wor work on things like math, reading, retention, of course, the creativity that I mentioned, and how to handle leadership opportunities. Works in life. Finally, we got Last Night on Earth. Now, Last Night on Earth is a zombie board game. It's all about surviving the oncoming horde. You learn to make some decisions in that game. Uh, when there are six of you on the board and five of you can get to the chopper, but one of you is out of place, you have to make that call. And uh, yes, you want to rescue them, but no, it's going to kill everybody. This is it, Morty. We're goners. We're not getting out of this one. You have to make a decision to cut those losses. 
this can really hurt in life. But this is a game. And uh, fortunately, your friend or partner will have the opportunity to complain to you about the result, sometimes endlessly. But they're there to do it. In real life, having to make a decision like that can lend itself easily to uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or uh, equivalent stresses and anxieties. Uh, if you're a combat vet or an unlucky civilian, call me. I can help.